Thank you, Declan, and thanks, Euros Hartley's. Uh, pleasure to be here and uh, to be the first participant on the quarterly energy series. Um, so, yeah, a great introduction there, and you know, it has been quite a journey. And given the sort of uh, more in-depth um, engagement uh, that Declan wanted to run today, I felt that it was a useful opportunity for us to be a bit reflective on the journey that it's taken to get to this point in time, and then start to look forward at what is in front of us. Um, so without further ado, I'll kick on. So when we start to look at uh, you know, what Strike has achieved over the last 36 months, I think that our track record is an important part of our story to focus on. And it is certainly something that I think can be used as an indicator of a potential future for performance of the business. We typically move at a speed of our, that our industry has not seen uh, for, for quite some time. And that is generally due to a lack of uh, ad adequate representation in that mid-cap energy space. But since entering the Perth Basin only sort of some 36 months ago, we've discovered three different gas fields. We've uh, taken FID on one of these gas fields. We've acquired a geothermal business, released resources and reserves across our gas and geothermal business acquired 3D seismic, 2D seismic, uh, and also launched a multi-billion dollar fertilizer development we call Project Haber, which will eventually be the jewel in our crown. That's all been underpinned by a significant degree of uh, operational uh, core competence. And we've actually had a consecutive successful run of seven exploration and appraisal wells, which is a, a run of success that, that has been uh, mirrored by very, by very few. That, uh, that run of upstream success has created that foundation business in which we are now looking to develop and monetize. And the next six months should see Strike move from uh, a developer, as we're now post FID at the while you're in gas asset, into commissioning and, and, and production operations and generating of our first free cash flow, starting to grow our market share in, uh, in the domestic gas market of Western Australia through the development of uh, the West Aragala gas field and preparing to take an FID later that year at uh, Project Haber as we start to, trans to, to, to take critical pre-FID milestones under our belt at Project Haber. Sort of forward, uh, fast forwarding the business over 18 months from there, we will have taken FID at Project Haber and we will be preparing to become a fully vertically integrated industrial low carbon manufacturing and industrial business. And uh, we'll also start to, to bring West Aragala gas online, which will see strike producing some 10 to 15% or operating 10 to 15% of WA's domestic gas on a daily basis. And we'll be beginning to make major inroads on our net zero 2030 commitment uh, through the testing of our geothermal resources uh, in the Midwest um, geothermal power project. But we've sort of put this uh, track record together and a forward plan that is, uh, is what I think is, is quite an exciting journey for shareholders current and potentially new to join uh, through the mixture of, you know, the classic three pillars of assets, people and strategy. But that's been overlain by a, a very unique culture at Strike, which has been uh, cultivated by both the board and the management. Uh, we've got a board and management with quite diverse backgrounds we're not, tradition, we're not all traditional oil and gas professionals. We've got miners, we've got uh, uh, small company um, executives, we've got uh, brokers, we've got uh, large company chemicals and mining executives. And, and quite critically, you know, we are looking at bringing all of those experiences together along with our speed, but our very, very laser focus on the long term and looking to set Strike up as a potential future ASX 200 business, not the ASX 300 business it is today. And Strike's performance to date has generated industry outperformance. And I think it is that very unique mix of the assets, the people, a very uh, innovative strategy, but overlaid with that culture that has developed that speed and that outperformance. When I start to break those three pillars down and we look at the assets, the, the core of the business's value is built off uh, its you know, gas assets in the Perth Basin. We started as a gas explorer and we, are trying, and we are evolving from there. And you can see what we have done is we put together one of the most attractive acreage packages in the Perth Basin, which is an area that's fast becoming the focal point of gas growth and development 
in Australia. It's an area with a lot of upside potential uh, still remaining. We're seeing some of the highest flow rates generated of onshore wells, some of the highest, largest onshore resources declared and reserves declared. And you can see Strike has been a significant player in developing a lot of these, a lot of these outcomes with four of the top eight, well, uh, top eight well results across the basin. And that is in two different geological plays, some 150 kilometers apart. So the application of our core competencies in our geoscience and our drilling, that has improved over time as we have become a much more uh, you know, integrated and uh, um, uh, competent upstream uh, player in the area. But our business is some three, over 3,000 square kilometers of acreage across two geological segments. We're never more than 10 kilometers away from one of West Australia's major pipelines. And uh, you know, it's incredibly geologically diverse with four gas discoveries already throughout that, you know, evenly spaced throughout that portfolio. When you start to look at this, uh, at these series of assets and the success that our neighbors have had as well, you can start to see some of the world's cheapest gas. This is gas that will compete on the cost curve, global cost curve with Qatar, with Russia, and certainly with America, where we're seeing gas prices almost reach 10 US dollars today. And so when you take that low cost gas and you start to uh, really um, take a long view on the geology there, you can start to, to, to put together a strategy which has not been replicated in Australia to date. And that is taking a very low cost uh, natural resource endowment and looking to add value to that. Yes, we need to bring cash flows into this business immediately. And that is quite, it's done simply through setting up the gas business to sell gas to the industrial customers of Western Australia. However, where we will generate the, the enormous amounts of value for our shareholders is through our low carbon fertilizer manufacturing business project Haver, where we can take that natural resource endowment and use that to create and build and construct a piece of long-term infrastructure that will allow the business to not only adequately monetize its gas resource over the coming decades, but also start to transition as a, a low carbon manufacturer of a critical input uh, into society, which is nitrogen-based fertilizer, which is the key ingredient to broad acre farming here in Australia. So when you add this strategy and you add those assets and that group of people together, you generate that outperformance. And that when we bring all of that uh, together in concert and we start to now sequence the objectives of the business, the priorities of the business, and ultimately the goals, you can see a nicely series of layered projects of two domestic gas projects followed quickly by a, a major mega project in our fertilizers and then uh, overlaying with growing out our, our, our gas business. This will allow Strike to start to focus on being a material generator of cash and free cash flows by the mid part of the decade. We're in 2027, taking a very top down view. It's not uh, unforeseen to, be, to see Strike generating greater than $600 million a year Australian in cash flows from this series of projects. And that does not include an enormous amount of undeveloped potential throughout that three and a half thousand square kilometers and some of the other opportunities that may present themselves over that journey between now and 2027. It's a really exciting time to be a Strike shareholder. It's a really exciting time to be the CEO of Strike. It's taken a lot of uh, energy, effort and human capital and equal parts human and financial capital to get here. And to be able to lay this out in front of you today and say this is a very realistic path in which the company will uh, go forward on is, a, uh, is, a, is I'm quite proud to be associated with that. And as I said, you know, the company's value is based around its gas. And if we just take some of those gas, uh, those gas metrics, you know, we're in a, in a world right now which is gas starved, which is a, uh, is a place where we haven't seen a lot of gas, successful gas exploration and development throughout Australia and the rest of the world as the oil and gas industry has gone through consecutive downturns. Strike's put together a very meaningful uh, existing reserve in Western Australia, as well as a large amount of upside resource, which does not include our large multi-discovery uh, South Berrigulla uh, wells, where we will uh, look to book an independent resource and reserve uh, in the coming quarters. However, when you look at that 257 petajoules of 2P reserves overlaid by 393 petajoules of 2C resources, and you compare that to one of the most recent transactions conducted in the Perth Basin, the acquisition of AWE by Mitsui in 2018 for $602 million, 
and the resource metrics in which was applied to that transaction, you can see Strike's market capitalization today is underpinned by its existing reserves of which are from West Arabella and Wallyering, which also have demonstrable upside uh, in them as, as independently certified by both NSAI and risk advisory. So when you put when you insert South Aragulla uh, geothermal assets and ultimately project the project have a fertilizer development, there are multiples of the market cap yet to be realized in the current uh, in, the, in the current share price performance. And I'm here to try and help you understand exactly how we're going to get there. When we look forward in our key gas businesses uh, gas business in, over the next 12 months, we are milestone rich across Wallyering, West Aragulla, South Aragulla, and Ocean Hill. We are currently developing uh, while you're in where we will look to have first gas sales in the first quarter of next year as we start to produce our first free cash flows as a business. Um, there are multiple uh, series of milestones that will be generated between now and then. Most importantly, announcements around gas and condensate offtake contracts, uh, the conversion of our existing Macquarie facilities into project finance, construction commissioning and moving into production operations where we currently estimate we'll generate on a gross basis for the joint venture somewhere between 50 and 75 million dollars a year in cash flows where the free cash flow yield on that is greater than 90 percent on top of that west Aragala will have a pretty uh a busy second half of the year as we move through our environmental permit approvals uh our financing processes and then ultimately into fid and on top of that we've still got a flow test to do at south Aragala, uh, which will occur in the coming weeks as we move the flow test equipment from uh, West Aragala 3, where today we announced a prolific flow rate from the West Aragala 3 well of some 90 million standard cubic feet a day, down to uh, the South Aragala well, which will be recompleted at the Wadjana level, and we'll conduct a second flow test on South Aragala 1. Um, announcement of the rig contract and the drilling of, uh, of South Aragala 2 and 3 in the first half of next year, followed by independent reserve certification, which will create the reserve basis and for which we will begin the financing processes for Project Haver. Uh, and that does not include the upside in which we will continue to progress Ocean Hill, where the success at Wallyering can be immediately translated to that uh, over at Ocean Hill. And we see that as another uh, large, potentially very low, ultra low cost development to bring more domestic gas online before the mid part of the decade. But the question I'm generally asked um, by most people is why do you want to go into fertilizers? Uh, and so fertilizers was an outcome of a very uh, long-term view on geology. We have core competencies in world-class geoscience uh, at Strike, and we, we took the view that there were many TCFs to be discovered in the North Perth Basin. And we realized that the West Australian domestic market was only gonna be capable of supporting so many, so many discoveries outside of potential exports through the Northwest Shelf LNG. We felt that we needed to be on both the gas demand and gas supply side, and therefore we went into downstream studies. We did those downstream studies and we continually came back to fertilizer to urea as being a, uh, a product or a segment that we could get into that was effectively a derivative of gas that would allow us to go into a large gas processing piece of infrastructure and access a much larger globally priced market in fertilizer. And, on top of that, we can uh, also consume a large amount of our carbon through that manufacturing process. So our carbon becomes a value add, not a byproduct, emission, or a cost. And we can also start to industrialize the business. It's no secret to anybody that is running uh, an EP business at the moment that EP multiples and valuations are decreasing as we start to become a lot more uh, long term focused in our climate and our climate change agenda. Industrial businesses trade a substantial premium to that of EMP businesses. By the time that we get to that 2027 cash flow, the majority of our cash flows will be linked to the manufacturing and industrialization of our business, as opposed to the generating of gas sales revenues. And then finally, getting into fertilizer was a way that we could toe dip our way into the hydrogen economy. We need to make Australia's largest amount of hydrogen and consume a lot of Australia's largest amount of hydrogen at Project Haver to make our fertilizer. And you can see uh, that was a way that we could get into hydrogen without diving headfirst into the shallow end of the hydrogen pool as some of our uh, peer group have done. And we can actually start to use our position as a hydrogen consumer to expand our business into uh, lower carbon forms of the product as they become economically and technically feasible. 
But really importantly, you know, Project Haber is going to deliver a superior return. If you look at the chart on the right hand side of this slide, you know, the look through gas price of Project Haber's fertilizer at a conservative US $500 a tonne is some 3.5 times higher than what you can achieve in the West Australian gas market on a term gas contract. You know, it's not quite the LNG spot net back pricing that we can that we can all uh, hope to one day achieve through uh, being granted an exemption to the export ban on onshore gas in Western Australia, but it does go to a long way of solving uh, and maximising the uh, value of our natural gas endowment that we have throughout our portfolio. And Project Hader, um, you know, is starting to be flanked by brand names that are very important on the global stage. The Coke, Coke Industries, who's, who have indicated that they will take the, uh, the fertilizer for up to 15 years. Uh, we're working through the binding offtake arrangements with Coke. Uh, that's based on internationally market priced uh, uh, fertilizer. Coke Industries has a double A plus credit rating. So we managed to maintain the credit halo of Project Haber, which is critical to the financing of this project. And we are also now associated with the best in class technology providers of ammonia, urea and granulation technology. Uh, probably one of the better engineers out there that can be associated with urea projects, Technip Energies. They've just finished uh, multiple 1.4 million ton uh, urea plants that they've been building, designing and building around the world. So 1.4 million tons is not by accident, it's two thirds of the Australian urea market, but it's also examples of existing reference plants that we can point to today. And you've also got the support of the Australian federal governments, uh, the West Australian government and other major uh, service providers in terms of our water and our port access where the Midwest port of Geraldton has been announced uh, a $332 million upgrade, which will support the export of uh, Project Haber's fertilizer around to the East coast of Australia. When you look at Strike, what it's doing, it's vert vertically integrating gas into downstream manufacturing, which is not replicated around the world. And as a result, we can overcome Australia's sort of non-competitive product, production costs and labor costs and offset that with world-class energy costs. And that means that we can produce equally globally competitive urea with that of Russia, at right at the left-hand side of the cost curve. And we can do that in the wheat belt in Western Australia, where 40% of our product will jump onto a, a truck and go directly to the farm in which it's consumed, therefore avoiding about hundred US dollars a ton in uh, logistics costs. We've got a head start against all of the, all of the um, potential competitors for the West Australian market. And we've actually got the ideally ge and geographically located project where we can uh, take advantage of our existing footprint, where we've recently acquired a very large piece of land to locate the fertilizer plant directly on top of the gas field and integrate a lot of behind the meat of renewable energy, which will generate the, global, the new global standard in terms of low carbon fertilizer. So, I'll sort of park uh, that as an operational update and uh, hand it back over to Declan from here. So thanks.